Hey what's up everyone, in this video I will show you how to add pagination in your react app. By the end of this video you will see these page numbers in your react application by using which you will be able to navigate through different pages with the help of the next button. The previous button will handle the edge cases of the next and previous button as well. We'll add a few styles and uh, finally you will be able to see 20 products on every page using the pagination. So let's get started. So I already have the project and my server is up and running and in the last video I showed how to fetch data from an API and uh, we use this API to fetch 194 products and this is how we do it. So in this video I want to manage the pagination for the list we get from that API. So we have 194 products on a single page and instead of that I want to show only 20 products per page. So let's start by first defining a constant variable which will hold the value of the number of products per page. So I want to have 20 products on every page and let's calculate the number of products, well the number of pages not products and I'm going to use the math.seal method and let's have the products dot length and divided by products per page then i'll i'm going to define a state variable for that i'll need to use use state so And I'm going to use this state variable to hold the value of the current page. So the current page will be zero at first. And now I want to calculate the start and end index. So the reason why I want to have the start index and the end index is here we are passing all the products at once. We are just using the map method on the products list which has 194 products in it and we are showing all the products at once on the single page. Now I want to show only 20 products so that's why I need to have the start index and the end index so that I can pass them in the slice method and this will be calculated based on the current page we are on. So I want to have a variable start and I'll calculate it by using the current page value and multiplying it with the products per page. That will be 20. Then I'm going to calculate this end index by using the value stored in start and I'm going to add it to the products per page. Now how it's going to work. So at first the index is zero, the current page, the, in, the initial value of it is zero. That means we are on the first page. So zero into 20, let me add a comment here. Zero into 20 is going to be zero. And now the, the value of start is zero. I'll add it in 20 and we'll have 20. So the start index and the end index will be 0 and 20 respectively for the first page. If you come on the second page, the index will be 1 or the current page will be 1. Uh, and so this will be calculated to 20. So the start is now 20 and the hence we have end index as 40. So we have the next 20 elements for the second page, so which will start from 20 and it will end on 39 because we exclude 40 in the 40th index. So this is how it's going to work. So let me use the slice method as well and pass start and end. Okay, so for now this will be 0 and 20 because we haven't added the logic to change the page number. And to do that, I'm going to use curly braces because I want to create an array of length number of pages okay so if we have 10 pages then i want to create an array of 10 elements and i'm going to do it using array dot from method this will take an object 
and I can specify the length in there. So this will be number of pages. This is the first argument. The second argument will be underscore and index. I have given underscore because so always the first argument here will be the actual element and the second argument will be the the index of that element. So if I'm accessing the first element, that means the index will be zero. So this is how it works. And I'm going to use arrow function and I want to add a button here. So if I have 10 pages, that means I'm going to have 10 buttons and I'm going to give it value as index plus one because the index is going to start from zero. And obviously we don't, we cannot have the page number as zero. It will start from one. So the first page will be one. And if I save it here, let's check how it looks like on the browser. So now we have the page numbers from 1 to 10 based on the number of products we have obviously it's not going to show the products based on the current page we are on but if you check we only have 20 products here and the reason why because we have used the slice method which is taking the start and end index and for currently we are on the first page and that's why it shows only 20 products the first 20 products but if you also see we have some errors here which says uh, we should have a key prop so the first one is in home file second one is also in the home.jsx file on the page number 21 25 so let's add some keys there so on page number 21 not the page number 21 the line number 21 we have this one okay so let's add a key prop here and let's use the index as a key and on 25 we have the product card so it should also have a key let's see if it takes it and this will be product.id okay this works fine we shouldn't be having those errors now okay so now that we have the buttons but we also want them to be able to change the current page when we click on the second page on the second button it should take us to the second page so let's add an on click handler and here I'm going to set the state of current page and it should be index okay so let's check what we have there let's refresh this page okay first of all we don't have any errors now because we have added the keys and second of all we are on the first page if i click here nothing changes because we obviously see the first 20 elements if i click on the second okay now the pages the products are changing because we are on the second page if i click 10 we now have less elements okay so we should be having 14 elements 14 products on this page because if we have 20 products on every page that means on the ninth page we'll have the products from 161 to 180 and we have 194 products that means on page 10 we'll have only 14 of them okay so here they are so now the clicking on buttons and navigating through different pages it works what about we have the next and previous button so that we don't have to click on these buttons individually we can just click on next and previous if we want to go forward and backwards so let's do that let's add a button before the array and it will say previous and let's add a handler for this one as well okay so i want to go to the previous page that means i'll be using set current page inside which what happened mm, why do i get okay instead of this okay we shouldn't be having an error now it was my bad okay so we want to access what the previous page was so we'll do it by 
using the arrow function inside here as well and we'll subtract one from the previous value so we'll get on the previous page then after the array i'm going to add one more button which will be our next button i'm going to add the on click handler here as well and we're going to set the state for current page so again access the previous value and this time add one to it okay let's save this and go there now i'm not sure which page i am on right now so i'm just going to click on the first page and if i click next then i go to the next page then third then fourth well right now we don't have any way to know which page we are on but still the next button is now working let's go to the previous page okay we have visited these before and this is the first page now what happens if i if now i know that i'm on the first page if i click the previous button now i don't see anything because the index becomes minus one so for the first page we have the index zero and when i click the previous button obviously it's going to change its value by subtracting one to it from it and hence the value becomes minus one and since we don't have any elements for that from that for that start index that means we are going not going to see any products and this is the edge case we don't want this to happen we don't want this button to be available for clicking when we are on the first page same goes for the next button as well if i click 10 and if i click next then i don't see any products because we have passed the limit and hence the next button should be disabled when we are on the 10th page so this is the edge case we have to handle and also i need to add some styles to these buttons so that we know which page we are on so let's try adding that logic so let's disable the previous button when we are on the first page so i'm going to add this disable logic so if the current page is equal to zero that means the previous button should be disabled and for the next button if the current page is the last page that means if it is number of pages minus one then it should be disabled also we had to add the style so i'm going to add some inline styles in here so let's say if the current not current let's try adding a border first and if current page is equal to index that means if the index and the current page hold the same value then we are going to have a border of one pixel solid dark slate blue okay if not let's have none then we are going to have another property which is outline because when, whenever we click on a button by default we get to see a black border around it so i don't want that to happen so outline should be none as well let's save this and go to the browser now you can see that we are on the first page we can also see the border that shows that we that which page we are on and hence the the previous button is also disabled so if i click on it nothing happens so not to worry we are not going to, to the previous page if you are on the first page and we can also see the border for every single page now so that styles also work fine and same goes for the next page it should be disabled yeah it is so this logic now works and i think this is pretty much it about the pagination we have 10 pages and all of them work fine all of them show the products that we are looking for based on the current logic the previous and next buttons also work and right now we have everything inside one component we have the home.jsx files where we are showing the products and we also have the the logic of pagination in there so why not create another separate component for pagination because let's say we have the cart page and i want to 
have a lot of products in the cart and obviously I cannot show all of them on the single page so I want to have the pagination there as well so I should be having a component which which I will be able to use in different components so let's try adding a new component pagination and then import it here in the home.jsx file so let's create a new component and name it as pagination.jsx I'm creating a function pagination it's going to accept some props and the props will be number of pages then we will have the current page and I will also want to set the new value for the current page so I'm going to call it on page change which will be a set current page function okay and now I'm going to return some elements so let's go to the home.jsx file copy all of these things and paste them here so instead of set current page I'm going to have on page change but the logic is going to stay the same if I save this and I need to import the pagination component now I think I haven't exported it yeah so I need to export it as well export default pagination save it and import this now and I can use it here now this accepts three props number of pages then the current page then the set current page so instead of set current page we are going to have on page change where it's the same thing I'm just trying to have a different name so that it will not confuse us the normal people like me okay let's save this and I think I have got everything in here so this is how the pagination component looks like and we can import it anywhere we want so it has now become a reusable component so let's see what we have in the browser okay so with the new component we have for pagination we can still see the page numbers and I think it should work fine we can go to the next page on the 10th page we, see, we can see that the next button is disabled on the first page the previous one is disabled and I can go to the previous page as well so this now works fine and this is pretty much all which I wanted to show in this video to how to implement the pagination in your own react application so that's all uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel like the video uh, you can share your comments and your thoughts and uh, thanks so much for watching I'll see you in the next one and I'm going to create the next video on adding routing to the react app so that will be the next video so thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one